only one scenario, so it's definitely first impressions. And, and hear me out throughout the rest of this, but I don't think the Dark Quarter is for me, but it may still be for you. Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co, and this is my first impressions, not review, first impressions of the Dark Quarter. First impressions because there's a single scenario to go through, so I, I, I mean, I've only basically gotten to barely scratch the surface of what this game has to offer. Now, the Dark Quarter is going to be coming to you from Lucky Duck, and, Lucky Duck Games and Van Ryder Games. There'll be a link to the Kickstarter down below, but this is a story-based game that is a, a blend of three things. It's a blend of the storytelling background from Van Ryder Games, from games like Detective City of Angels, from Final Girl, from the atmosphere, mood, story, and theme that they bring to their experiences, combined with the mechanical, dice-rolling, push-your-luck, skill-test system, and exploration that you found in Destinies, combined with a little bit of point-and-click adventuring and detective stuff that you found from Chronicles of Crime from Lucky Duck Games as well. So it's a little bit of a hybrid of all different aspects, and it has some of the parts that I've really enjoyed from some of those games and some of the parts that were not as much for myself as some of those games. Now, first and foremost, this is a prototype. Everything you see here is a prototype. All stuff subject to change, content, rules, things, all the usual stuff. This is on Kickstarter, I believe. Probably have a link to that down below. And this one is an app-based experience. If app-based experiences scare you off, then, I mean, go ahead, be scared off. If you did not like Destinies, if you did not like Chronicles of Crime, if you've never enjoyed a game with an app, this is absolutely a game with an app. This is set in New Orleans, and this has a bit of a mystical background to it. A lot of magical, mystery, detective stuff, but along with a hint of the occult and the bizarre to, to go along for the ride. It's a game which you're going to start off by picking your characters. So, for example, if we grab Robichaux, Robichaux and Moreau over there, hit OK. We set their various talents accordingly. I, I, I just put them down over here. But you set their specific talents, which is relevant for the skill test that you'll go through. And who you choose, grab their starting items, go through the setup. Who you choose is going to have a severe impact on how you engage with this game because there's a lot of background exploration stuff happening as you go through the experience, as you go through the actual detective, detectiving, let's go with the word detectiving, as you figure out what's supposed to be happening, as you try to unlock and unravel the mysteries of the case, you are also dealing with and engaging with your own backstory. If you go through the game with Moro and Robichaux over here and you f switch it to the other two characters, you will have a very different experience. There'll be overlap for sure, there'll be aspects you'll have touched upon, there'll be a little bit more of a guided understanding of what you're going through and why, but you will interact with entirely new elements that you missed the first time around. Whether you play this as a one, two, three, or four player game, or whether you play it handily more than one character, you can do all of that and you'll engage with different elements of this story. Past that, that's what this game is. This is a cooperative storytelling game, one in which... I haven't yet gotten a full feel for the nature of uncovering one character's goals versus another. Is this a 100% cooperative? Are there parts where your paths or opinions will diverge? I didn't get any sense of that from the first starting scenario. We've, I've played this game so far as a one-player game and as a two-player experience, so diving into it to get a different aspect of the approach that both of those give you, but both of them for me have come down to a detective story. A story of engaging with the world as you grab this little map over here, as you put down the board, as you put down different aspects, different characters, I'm not going to grab the right one because it's not the pile, you put different characters down on the board in different ways, engaging with them on the map, putting down different items of interest, engaging with them in the application, having conversations with them, making choices, and making skill tests. This is where you're going to start having a lot of the Destiny's aspect going on. Your turn structure in this game involves you loading up and refreshing a single die from one of these extra dice over here, which again, if you've played Destiny's, you'll be very familiar with, and then engaging on your turn, moving to a location, finding a point of interest, unlocking different points of the game. This is actually not that. You'll have, you'll have these points of interest on the board that you can explore, and as you engage those, you'll find yourself grabbing cards from the deck that the app will instruct you to grab, and you'll put those cards, this one will go down over here, this is going to be Robichaux's house over here, small but very, very non-real spoiler going on here, and then you'll have different points of interest that the app will instruct you to place as you figure out what you're engaging with. And you'll go through a system of, of engaging with the application, of touching the application, to deciding what you inter want to interact with as the, the app tells you whether to place down new locations or what story interactions you have, what new information you've uncovered, who else is in this world, who was frustrated with whom in terms of the murder that was committed, who hung out with who behind the scenes, who was getting paid by that corporation on the side, and which people you can trust and which people are in your way. 
the application, the story, the whole system along the way will give you the opportunity to engage with hints. So if you find yourself frustrated by the experience, if you find yourself frustrated with not being able to figure out the next step, you can engage with hints along the way, which will have an impact on your score at the end, although it depends on how you're playing this game, whether you're playing it for the sake of simply getting to the end and uncovering things, or whether you actually care what your score is, how well you did, how many hints you took, how fast you uncovered the mystery. Along the way, there is that mystery aspect. This is where we start to shift away from the from the destiny system, where you have an app, where you have your characters, you have the ability to move your skills up, you have the ability to go ahead and make skill checks to try to see if you passed or failed any particular encounter or how hard you passed a failure. If you're engaging with a brute on the street, you may need two, maybe three successes to knock them out. Or maybe you only need one. Maybe they're lightweight. And those different aspects, that all feeds into the Destiny skill check system that you have over here. But along the way, you also have the Chronicles of Crime system. You can find various encounters, various items along the way. You talk with some character from your backstory and they give you something new. And now you go back to the station and you show that to the person at the desk. And you may find something new. Or you may not. Maybe you have to intimidate them. Maybe you have to coax them. Maybe you have to try to figure out the ways to interact. But there is a degree of point and click with the QR codes that this game will present. Again, this will start to sound very familiar if you've played Chronicles of Crime, also from Lucky Duck. That idea of having items, of having locations, of having a board, that this is all abstracted. I've seen no meaning, again, one scenario in, but past using this board as a general placeholder for locations, this doesn't seem to have any real impact, just abstracting the world down to something that drop more concrete. The location's here, the location's there, but no, no actual meaningful impact, no gaps in time, no changes as far as what you do or how you do it. Just It's just a board that has a place where you can put these tokens as you choose to explore them, as you slowly flip these cards, which represent the actual locations you're engaging with. We have this, well, let's move that over here. We have this one over here, which is another location you may be able to go to, another location you'll be interacting with. You have the park where things have happened down here. There's all these ways to interact, all of them getting their various tokens, their various people that will go on the board, people you have to engage with and interact with in different ways, deciding who to talk to, which questions to ask them based on prior conversations you've had. Oh, you've heard about the this, this, and this, and this? Well, maybe you go to a new person, or maybe someone you've talked to already, and you ask them questions based with that new degree of information you unlocked along the way. Again, to go back to what I said at the beginning, this has the Destiny skill system from Destinies. It has the interaction, QR codes, and detective aspect of Chronicles Crime. And then it has the dark, gritty storytelling of a Van Ryder's experience. And that's basically what's going on in this game. You're going to rinse and repeat this cycle of just taking turns back and forth, occasionally having the app ping you with someone yelling at you for not solving the mystery in time. And eventually you'll come to this climactic end scenario where things will happen depending on the choices you make, depending on what you remember you've been told, depending on if you understand what you have to give, offer, fight, engage, the way to approach that end game. And again, this is one scenario, so I'm only talking about one scenario right now. That's going to be the dark quarter from Lucky Duck Games. Which brings me to the review part of things, starting off with ease of play, which is ridiculously easy. There is a rule book, and you should read the rule book because it helps to understand some basic concepts, but it's a quick rule book to read, and the app will mostly guide you through things past that. Primarily, you want to read the rule book to understand how success checks work, how this board works, what these symbols very could mean, how you engage with the decks. There's a few things to go through with, but you're talking about light reading with a coffee for 10 15 minutes, followed by just diving straight into the app as the app continues to guide you through the experience. So, ease of play, uh, amazing. Some small fiddly aspects in terms of potential I don't know how much this goes to prototype how much will be changed but for example at one point we had one of our boards shook and we had no idea what the things were and we couldn't check the application to see where they were and so I booted up my phone and just reloaded the game with the same character to see what his initial stats were it would have been nice to see that again these this all goes down to the prototype phase of things where I don't know what will carry over into the final game or not as far as player count it's a one to four player game I've played this as a one and two player experience to dive into it both uh, both directions have not gone above two and honestly given my experience so far I would say that one player is arguably my favorite from those two player accounts. I found that even at two players, the back and forth on the app didn't work for me as well as it had in Destiny. There's going to be a lot of that, that sentence there, as well as it had in Destiny's for me. Although I think it comes down to the nature of the types of experience these games are presenting. But yeah, there's a lot of engaging with the application, a lot of touching various story choices as far as I'm going to ask this, I'm going to have another two questions, I'll ask them about that, they'll ask about that, I'll intimidate this, I'll get a result. There's a lot of interacting with the app in a way that I found that the more players you had, again, one versus two, 
just meant I was more or less connected to what was going on. As a one-player experience, I knew everything that was happening, and this was an engaging story. As a two-player experience, I was half peeking over my friend's shoulder and half just waiting for my turn to come back. As far as what I like, don't like, and can see others not liking, the story is strong in this. And this is one of those aspects where diving in as various characters will have both adding replayability to the experience, as well as giving you different aspects of what's going on in this world. I still haven't played as one of the characters, and I want to know what their interaction with, what their interaction with the world is, how they engage, what their backstory is. There's some cards here I haven't played with, and I'm sure it's their deck, their, their cards. The rest of them I've all gone through as I've gone through this experience. But I want to see what their story is. I want to see what their background is. And so it does have a solid story driving the entire thing, both in the main story arc as well as the side character sidelines that are going along for the ride. There's different beats to the way each character engages. There's different strategies in terms of what they prefer, whether they prefer to be more physically violent, cast spells, ask questions. Characters are better and worse at different things, and they have their own little fun decks of abilities that you can unlock as you go. Different interactions with the stories will give you different resources that you can use to buy or add these cards to the game. Cards that I feel slightly bothered by because some of these cards would have been really helpful if I was playing a multiple campaign arc. And I, I felt like there's no point using them if I'm playing a single scenario right now. But that was a f bit of a waste there. But the cards in general give you abilities, different ways to improve your skill test, different ways to improve your character for the next game, for the next series of games, different backups for when you fail something. The cards give you a nice little taste of extra abilities. I don't know how big those decks will get per character in the final game. In the prototype, we have like five or six cards. I imagine there'll be more just based on how quickly I was able to get the cards, but I don't know for sure. Past that, the solo play I talked about already has uh, is is a stronger solo play experience for me because of the fact that I could just fully engage without having to worry about whether we're working together, whether I should be paying attention to what you're doing, how strongly. It almost would have been nice if you could run the game on two different applications, showing the screens at the same time. Alternatively, you can cast it to a screen if you want to run anything like that, but I just found the trying to run it on a single tablet, and it was a tablet, it's not a phone, but trying to run on a single tablet with multiple people just uh, found that I lost a little bit of that story. But there are also different ways to approach the story. At least from having different dove into this twice now, I can tell you that there are different connection points to get to the same end results. Those fi That final showdown, and again, one scenario, but that final showdown gave you, gives you a lot of there's a lot of things you have to know walking into the final showdown and how you get that information from whom you get that information, the various people that will drop hints along the way. Some of those people might be in backstories and side stories. Some of those people might be in the main story arc. You can have a lot of information being dropped along the way, different ways, characters, people, approaches, tactics you can use to approach the same core central story, at least based on this one scenario. As far as what I didn't like, it's going to come down to the Chronicles of Crime feeling of the game. And, and for context, Chronicles of Crime is a system that I've liked at times and resented at times. The nature of the point and click driven adventure I find is something that can be very rewarding when you're making choices that feel like they are educated guesses based on the information you have at hand. But I also find that Chronicles of Crime and The Dark Order as well based on my one scenario Sometimes I feel rewarded for having noticed something earlier, for having put two and two together and asked a question. I only had two questions with that character before my turn runs out, but I knew exactly what to ask because I had seen that information here and here, or made an educated guess based on the situation. But just as often, I find it devolves to point-and-click guesswork. That's what it feels like, at least on my end. It feels like I'm just tapping the next thing, trying to show them a new item. Ooh, look, I found this new thing. Let me show them that because I've been at a brick wall for the past three turns and I feel like I'm making no progress. And so sometimes I find these games, The Dark Quarter and Chronicles of Crime as a system, I find they devolve into point and click adventuring that I don't personally find as rewarding. Additionally, there's a lack of a map over here. And this is going to be where I contrast it with Destinies, where Destinies is a game that I absolutely loved for context. If you've seen my videos in the past, I love Destinies and I'm eager to continue diving, diving back into it. In fact, one thing that, New Alone, that, that, that Dark Order does better than Destinies is the solo play. The solo play in Dark Order is significantly better than it is in Destinies, but I find that the lack of a map takes me a drop out of the experience. It pushes me a, ba a bit more towards feeling point-and-click adventure as opposed to engaging and interacting with a full-blown setup on the board, a specific map that I have to wander around and engage with various locations. This one feels a bit more abstracted. It feels a bit more detective-y, which might be great on the one hand, but I was looking for a feeling that was a bit more adventure -y. And so 
it just takes me out of the experience by not having a physical actual map as opposed to having these little points that connect to various locations on the board. And the center board, the fact that the center board has no meaning and takes up so much space, and again, meaning is relative. Maybe you particularly get a little bit more of the fact that you know that the detective agency is over here and the park's over there and all those different aspects. I didn't. It didn't feel like I was engaging with the map in any sense other than having this as a little like a uh, little hud that I could, I could pull up the map and where I was, but it had no meaningful interaction or engagement with the game, and so this is just, to me, unnecessary. Again, prototype. Factor that in. I don't know whether this has more meaning as you go through it, but based on my experience so far, it did not. And so those those aspects, the point-and-click adventure, the lack of a map, and then more on the nitpick side, the presence of this map, are the main reasons or the main aspects that I did not love about the Dark Quarter. As far as I can see others not liking, there's a lot of dice rolling in this game. And if you didn't like Destinies, if you didn't like the luck-based aspect of charging up a die and then choosing to spend all your dice and then failing the test anyway, which can absolutely happen, or even worse, getting two successes and finding out this is one of those times where you needed three, finding that information out, if you don't enjoy that, if you, well, I mean, if you don't understand, if you don't enjoy it, I can understand why, but if you don't like the dice rolling, if you don't like the luck, this is going to have that in many, 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 many of your skill tests. And there are a lot of skill tests to be had. And the skill tests represent another barrier to finding out the information. It's not always just point and click. Sometimes it's point and click and skill test. And so you have to figure out the combination of those factors that all work together. You have to run a skill test to figure out how many questions you can ask. And so that kind of gives another barrier to the point and click aspect. The combination of the luck, which I don't mind personally, and then the point and click, which I do mind personally, you have to kind of be okay with both of those if you're going to properly enjoy this game. And then lastly, I'd say it's a dark and gritty story. It's a story that adds in swearing and adult themes almost for the sake of having it. It seems to pull it back just a touch of what subjects is willing to go down or not, but it's specifically and intentionally taking a heavier handed approach to the language, to the, the degree of murder and grisliness and vengefulness and things that it's throwing in your direction. So you have to be okay with that. Doesn't personally bother me, but you have to be okay with that if you dive into this. This is not I imagine, depends on your kids, I'm sure, but it's not a kid-friendly game in the typical sense, unless, of course, you're fine with it, in which case, you do you. But that's basically what's going on with the Dark Quarter. Which brings us to final thoughts, and again, first impressions on this one, which is why there's also not going to be a rating on this one just yet. I like the Dark Quarter. Don't get me wrong. It's not that I don't like it, it's not in the slightest, it's that I walked into this one knowing that it was being compared to Destinies, which also set a high bar for me personally. I love Destinies, and so I was excited and eager to dive into the Dark Quarter, and then for me it felt a bit more like Chronicles of Crime than the Dark than, than like Destinies. That's going to be good news or bad news depending on who you are, because Chronicles of Crime is a well-loved game. It's a well-loved game, a well-loved system, and the reason... I mean, the fact that I compare this to Chronicles of Crime and I tell you it's a game that because it's similar to Chronicles of Crime makes this one that is a little bit less up my alley than Destinies was may be a reason why it's up your alley. It may be a reason why this one works for you. Again, this combines those aspects. It combines the, the, it feels like a Van Ryder game thematically, but it pulls in the mechanical aspects of two different Lucky Duck experiences, two different Lucky Duck genres, and it does so well. My concern isn't whether it does so well or not. It absolutely, again, it captures the, the, it captures the essences of those three things all, very well at the same time. I think it just comes down to whether you're the target audience for that. For me, I love the Destiny system, I love the exploration, I love the character development, I love the stories, the, the degree, again, I want to dive back into it even just to find out the other character's side story. I'm like, how can I properly go through this full adventure and play a story after story? Like, am I going to go play only four characters the entire time? Because I want to know what's going on, I want to know how that third character integrates with everyone else, what their dynamics are, what other elements there she adds or in terms of interacting with anyone, from the Chief to, 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 to Robichaud to whoever. I don't know how that's going to play out, I don't know her personality. And I kind of want to. So it has that. It has a solid story. It has a solid system. And it has a solid degree of detectiving around the board. At the same time, for me primarily, I was looking for Destinies 2.0. And this feels a drop closer to Chronicles of Crime 2.0 than it does to Destinies. And so that's where I am with this. I, I see the promise. I think it's going to be a good fit for a right of people. I think it's going to... That, that's not a sentence. I think it's going to be a good fit for a lot of people. Uh, for me, it's an enjoyable experience. But not one that is knocking me out of the park quite yet. Again, but just because of what I prefer personally. And that's basically it. As far as other game recommendations, uh, there's going to be Chronicles of Crime, Destinies, and probably Detective City of Angels from Van, Van Ryder Games, as far as the three games I'd point you to. Chronicles of Crime, because 
well, everything I said this entire review, Destinies because everything I said this entire review, and Detective City of Angels because everything I said during this entire review. Those are the three games I would point you to as far as other game systems that will capture various aspects of what the Dark Quarter is bringing to your table. I think this is a good game. I think it's a promising game. I'm just not yet certain whether this is a game I'm going to fully dive into myself. Until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Boardium Co. Hope you found this video helpful or informative or useful in some way. Link to the Kickstarter down below. And as always, have a good one.